Okay, these are the rest of the example problems from chapter 5.3. Um, we're going to solve for x, which in most of these cases means we're going to be solving for the angle. Uh, we did a couple examples yesterday, and we're going to continue with um, example problems today. So our example is the cotangent of x cosine squared x equals 2 cotangent x. And there's some really what there is is there's some overriding themes from your algebra experience. And when kids see this, they see, oh my gosh, I have all these letters. What am I going to do with them? What you really have to do is kind of like boil it down to what it is. Like if you had, if you had, let's say, I don't know, 5x squared um, equals 2x. 5x squared equals 2x. I mean, would you even know where to proceed to try to solve for x? And what I would do in a situation like this, I see a squared and an x, I would set it equal to zero, and then maybe use a quadratic formula, or maybe factor it, or maybe do something like that. So when you look at these equations, don't see the tangents and the cotangents. Think about them as like variables. Like I have these, these this is like an entire variable. So I'm really what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat these in that fashion and then maybe use some trig functions to try to solve them out. So the first thing I want to do, I'm going to set it equal to zero. So I got cotangent x cosine squared x minus 2 cotangent x equals zero. I've set it equal to zero. I kind of grouped all these together. Okay, major thing to be able to do to these is factor them. What factoring technique would you use with cotangent x, cosine squared x, minus 2 cotangent x? What's that? Pull out cotangent. So what he just said is GCF factor. I'm going to pull out a cotangent. So cotangent is going to come out in front. Cotangent is going to come out in front. So I got cotangent x, cotangent x out in front. I have cosine squared x minus 2. Cotangent cosine squared x minus 2, yep, equals 0. And I'm off and running with it. So I got it to there. Okay? When you're in algebra, and this doesn't fall from this, but when you're in algebra and you have something like this, x times x minus 1 equals 0, there's a thing called the zero product rule where you set the first part equal to 0 and solve, and you take the second part, set it equal to 0 and solve. So when we're in algebra, we did something like this. And then we got it down to x is 0 or x is 1. That's the corresponding algebra for this. We want to set each one of these, called the zero product rule, we're going to set this factor equal to 0, we're going to set this factor equal to 0, and then we're going to solve it out. So I got cotangent x equals 0, and I got cosine squared x minus 2 equals 0. And then I'm just solving. This one is easy. I've got to find where the cotangent is 0. This one, not so easy. I got cosine squared x equals 2. I add the 2 to both sides, and I'll square root it. I get cosine x equals plus or minus radical 2. Okay? So all of this that I did here, 100% algebra-based. On this left side, I haven't done a thing that's trig yet. I set equal to zero, I factored, I used the zero product rule, and I got the values. Now is where it comes in where you start using your trig. I gotta find where cotangent is zero. What does cotangent stand for on the unit circle? What over what? X over, y. X over y. Now if I'm gonna get zero out of it, I'm just gonna tell you the zeros and ones happen at these spots. So that's one zero, that's zero one, that's negative 1, 0, and that's um, 0, negative 1. So there are some spots where x over y, I'm looking for x over y to equal 0. That's really what I'm looking for here. So the x value, oops, the x value divided by the y value here is undefined. The x value divided by the y value here is 0. x over y undefined x over y is 0. So the two spots I'm looking for are here and here. Okay, so one of my answers is pi over 2, and another answer is 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. 
plus 2 pi n. So I got it to there, and that's what it looks like. Okay? Questions on this one right here on where I got those. I mean, you got to get it down to there, and it's got to look like that. Okay. See if you remember this from yesterday. Your Canvas quiz is going to morph those two answers. Why? Yes. They lie in a straight line, let's go to morph them. If you wrote these, you'd get 100%. Your canvas quiz is going to morph them together into pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. I will take that. Your canvas quiz will morph them into that. This is fine on your final. Understand it's going to put them together for the quiz that you have to take online. Okay, so we got those two. That's the first part. The second part, we've done this. Now we need to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna erase this, chunk of this stuff up here and let's go back and, and now let's find, let's go up here and let's find where the cosine of x is plus or minus root two, okay? When you see root twos, you think of root two, or you think of the 45 degree spots, right? Only the 45 degree spots are the root two over two, root two over two spots, right? It looks like one of those, but it's not over two, okay? I'm not real sure where that happens. There's a way on your calculator to figure out where that happens, if it happens at all. So take your calculator out, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna go to degrees on my calculator. Let me go find my calculator. Here we go, I'm gonna go to degrees and I'll pull this back up here. Okay, so I'm going to go um, y equals, uh, quit out of that, and I want to know where in the world does um, cosine equal root 2. So I'm going to hit second cosine of the negative 1. Uh, oops, I want my mode in degrees first. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it into degrees just so I know the angle measure. Um, so I'm going to go cosine of the negative 1 of square root 2. And then close it off and see what your calculator says. I want you to physically look at what your calculator is telling you on this because there's something major going on here. And I hit enter. And I got quit domain error. Uh-oh. Guys, there's a rule for cosine about what it can never be. Do you know what cosine can never be more than? It can't ever be one. So if this is more than one and square root of two is more than one, this answer doesn't exist. There is no spot where cosine is radical two and there is no solution on this little, this little chunk right here. So that little chunk, uh, that part has no solutions. And that can happen. And we can definitely have spots that, that don't work. So what we're saying is, is these two answers will work in this equation, it will make it equal. And we're often we're solving. We'll have to check for extraneous roots at times. We'll see if they work and we'll go from there. Okay, we'll probably even do a graphic check here today. All right, example four. We have two sine squared x minus sine x minus one. What does it look like from algebra, from algebra two? What in the world does that thing look like? X what? X looks like x squared, it looks like 2x squared uh, minus x minus 1. It looks like a trinomial, doesn't it? Does it look like a trinomial to you? Forget about sine squared x, think about it as x. So we're going to factor this thing into two binomials. Trinomials, two binomials. So here we go, we'll go one. I don't even think I need to, uh, I don't even think I need to do the x-wing thing. I think I can go right to the right to the thing. So here we go. I got two sine x and one sine x. That, those two will get me to two sine squared x. And then I got one, so I know I need a one and a one. Would you guys please situate the signs so I can get a negative sine x in the middle? What, what? Positive, negative, negative, positive, negative. You think it's positive, negative? 
Okay, let's try it. Let's try positive, negative. Let's see if it works. Okay? 2 sine squared x minus 2 sine x plus 1 sine x. What's minus 2 sine plus 1 sine? Minus sine. Good job. And then these two give me negative 1. So I factored it correctly. I got it to where it, the factor need to. Now I'm going to use a zero product rule. This is equal to zero. This is equal to zero. So we got 2 sine x equals, oh, sorry, 2 sine x plus 1. 2 sine x plus 1 equals zero. And sine x minus 1 equals zero. So those are the two things I need to solve out. Okay? Um, I don't know where you're at in your unit circle. I, I don't know if you guys are good at it or what. I, I mean, if you have it out, it's probably a good aid on this stuff. You could probably rip them off a lot faster than, than without, but it, it's kind of up to you. So I'll minus one and divide by two. So I get sine x is equal to negative one half, minus one and I divide it by two in my head. And then here I got sine x equals one so I gotta find the values where sine is negative one half and where sine is one. And those are two spots on the unit circle. So here we go, let's see if we can get these spots right here. Um, sine is y, so I'm looking for where the y value is negative one half. Do you know what quadrants we're in? Three and four, sine is negative down here, so y is negative down. So I'm thinking I'm coming off at this 30 degree angle here and that 30 degree reference angle there. Those are the two spots I'm thinking of. Okay, let's think about it now. Root three over two down a half. That's root three over two down one half. Sine is y, the y value is negative one half. So I found one there, that's good. Um, here, I got this one at root three over two. Oops, that's negative root three over two, by the way. Uh, root three over two to the right and down a half. That's negative sign right there. Um, so I got that one. Hey, do you think the canvas quiz can morph those two together? They cannot. They're not 180 degrees away from each other. They cannot morph those two away. So here we go. Uh, 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6. That spot right there is 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. There's one answer. 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, plus 2 pi n. There's another answer. There's an answer. So I got two answers so far. Let's see if there's more. Sine x equals 1. Where does sine equal 1 at? It's only in one spot. Yep. Yep, right up here. Zero comma one. The y value is one right there. So my sine x is equal to one. So pi over two plus two pi n is another answer. We just found three answers. Let's go verify these three answers on our graphing calculators. Please do this. Please take out your graphing calculators. Please plug in buttons with me and let's go. So I'm gonna plug in this whole jazz here, that whole thing. So I'm gonna go to y equals, I'm even gonna change my window on this. Y equals, oh clear, get out of that. All right, so I'm gonna clear off what I had from yesterday and I'm gonna type in two sine squared x and it's gotta go like this, two parentheses, sine x and squared. And it is a little different order than what they have here, but that's how you input it. Two sine x, close off the parentheses squared, minus sine x, I'll close that one off, and then minus one, okay? And I want, uh, I'm gonna set up my window, and I'm gonna set up my window specific to this problem, okay? So I'm gonna go from negative pi, negative pi, um, and I'm gonna go to four pi for my window, and then my x scale, I'm gonna change it to something I rarely use. And it's because of this problem that I'm changing it to something I rarely use. I'm gonna change it to pi over six. Oops, pi over six is gonna be my scale. I don't mind my mins, negative five to five, and that's, that's what I got. Negative five to five, and my scale is one. And then I'm gonna hit the graph key, and it's, oh, I forgot to hit the mode radians, my bad. I have to go change my mode into radians or it's not gonna work. 
So let's try this again. Mode back to radians, boom. And now let's try this graph again. Okay, I got that. Oh, that's kind of funky. <laughs> you got it. It got all it got all wonky because of that square. It's still a wave, but it got all wonky because of that. Can anybody tell me what they think this little dot right here is? Guesses. I'm gonna tell you that dot appears somewhere over here. Yes. Is it seven pi over six? Nope, that one is not seven pi over six. Is it, one? it is not one. It's actually covered up on my board. Pi over two. What? Pi over two. It's pi over two. Why? Because it went. I went by pi over six is one pi over six, two pi over six. What is three pi over six? That's pi over two. Oh, cool beans. Okay, what's that one? One pi over six, two pi over six, three pi over six, four pi over six, five pi over six, six pi over six, boom! Seven pi over six. Eight pi over six, nine pi over six, 10 pi over six, 11 pi over six. Oh my gosh, I think we got it right. There's my answers. They appear as x-intercepts on my graph. I'm glad I went by pi over threes because then I didn't have to decimal, or pi over sixes because then I didn't have to decimalize them. But the graph of where it hits the x-axis match up with those. I have a lot of confidence that we got it right. That's the connection piece. All right, let's do another one. All right, there we go. All right, algebra connection here, algebra connection. Uh, does anybody remember factoring 2x squared plus 3y minus 3 equals 0 in algebra 2? Do you remember doing that? Yes or no? You better not be saying yes. Looks a little wonky, doesn't it? Yeah, because you didn't factor that. You didn't do that. Luckily in trig, we have ways of making them all the same because I can't make those, uh, you didn't factor that thing, that was not. But here I am, here I am, and I got sine and cosine. It's like having an X and a Y. I don't want that. I want them to be the same. If I could get them the same, then I could maybe do something. And it turns out that if you have different trig functions, sometimes you can leave them together, but sometimes you could do this. Can you tell me what sine squared is off of your cheat sheet? One minus cosine squared. Oh, look at that. I just made them the same. I just made them the same. Now I can do my algebra. Now I can do my math. I can get there. So I'm gonna do some distributing. I'm gonna do some, so that was a trig step. Definitely a trig step on that one. Now I'm gonna do some distributing, doing all that jazz. All right, here we go. So I got two minus two cosine squared x plus three cosine x minus three equals zero. I distributed. I got negative two cosine squared x uh, plus three cosine x minus one equals zero. All right, that looks like a trinomial that I'm used to. That looks like x squared x and one. I don't know, Do you got, did you guys leave the negative there? Did you multiply through by a negative one in algebra? You could do it either way. I mean, if you don't like the negative there, multiply through by a negative one. And I got two cosine squared x minus three cosine x plus one equals zero. And that's what I'm trying to factor. That guy right there can factor. So I'm gonna try it now, factor it. All right, what's the first term gotta be? Here and here. That spot there and that spot there has to multiply up to that spot there. So give me two values to put in those two spots. Two cosine x and cosine x. I know it's gotta be one. Is this, oh no, this is different. That's a one and a one right there. And now I need sines to get me negative three cosine x. Multiplies to positive one, 
When I FOIL adds to negative 3, it'll be negative negative. Let me show you. 2 cosine squared. Minus 2 cosine, minus 1 cosine is minus 3 cosine. That works. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. There are my two factors. I will set those two factors equal to 0. And we'll see what we got. 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1, divide by 2. I can do that in my head. Cosine x is 1 half. I'll have to find the values where the x value is a half. Here we go. Cosine x. Um, cosine x equals 1. I'm going to have to find the values where cosine is 1. Let's see if we can do this. Cosine x is 1. Sine is y. Cosine is x. Where are the x values 1 half? Yep. The 60 degree up here. And... Here? No. Negative one half x. Fourth quadrant here. We're looking at those two spots. Because this ordered pair is one half, one half root three over two. And this ordered pair is one half root three over two. We're looking at those 60 degree values. So here we go. One pi over three. Two pi over three. Three pi over three. Four pi over three. Five pi over three. Cannot be morphed, they are not 180 apart. Plus 2 pi n, plus 2 pi n. Okay, so I have these two answers right here. Okay, got them like that. Okay, cosine is 1. Where is the, where is the x value 1? Well, I think it's only 1 right over here, isn't it? Yep, and that's the 1 comma 0. So you could put 0 uh, plus 2 pi n. That's probably how you'd write it. 0 plus 2 pi n, and we have that. And you could graph this problem. You could graph the original. You could go in and see if the intercepts of the graph line up with the values that you found. That would not be a, a problem. That would be too bad to be able to go in and Take that thing on that graphing calculator, shove it in. I'm going to do a, another problem like that here in just a second, but um, that's that. Okay, that was fun. All right, next type. Is X a solution? Is X a solution um, for the given thing? When you did Algebra 2, what did you do when you asked your question, does this thing, is this a solution of this? What was, what was the process that you did? My kid did it last night in his seventh grade math. It, uh, the, the question on his Canvas quiz asked, is X a solution for the, and this was in pre-algebra, what do you do when you want to know, um, like X minus uh, 8X squared equals 10, X is 2, is X a solution? What do you do? Plug it in. Just plug it in. Just plug it in. Let's see. Three, tangent of two times pi over 12. And that squared really means that squared. That's the one thing that I would probably change there. Okay. Uh, minus one equals zero. I don't know. Let's see if it equals zero. Three, um, tangent Tangent of pi over 6 squared minus 1 equals 0. I wonder what the tangent at pi over 6 is. I don't know. Let's go figure it out. Um, pi over 6 is here. The ordered pair is root 3 over 2, comma, a half. What is y over x for that? 1 half over root 3 over 2, right? Yep. 1 half um, over root 3 over 2, whap, whap, uh, multiply by root 3 over root 3. I got root 3 over 3 for tangent of pi over 6. So 3, root 3 over 3, squared, minus 1. 3, 3 ninths is 1 third, minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 equals 0, yes. 
it worked. That's one way. That is one way. But I like the graphic way because the graphic way is a pre-calc way. I just did pre-algebra. Let's do this class. Would you please for me plug that in as Y1? Here we go, on, y, I'm gonna plug that guy in, I'll clear that off. I'm gonna plug in three tangent squared, two x minus one. Three, I'm gonna parenthesize this, and I'm gonna go tangent of two x, and I'm gonna close it, close it, square it. Close it, close it, square it, minus one. Enter. I'm gonna go to my window. Uh, my scale on the window, looky here, you see this guy right here? I'm gonna change my scale to pi over three. And if I'm right, if this is a solution, it should hit on the fifth tick mark if I go by pi over three. I don't know if it's going to or not. Enter, graph. There's the funky picture. Oh, I can't even see. Oh, what a bad, oh my gosh. Fifth tick mark. One, two, three, four, five. I don't think it hits at the fifth tick mark there, but I can't tell. I should probably go one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna go out to that fifth tick mark, and I'm gonna see if that graph hits on the fifth. Ooh, I'm already out there. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, I'm almost on the fifth tick mark. I'm gonna zoom in one time, and I'm gonna see if it hits on that fifth tick mark. Should be right there. Should, nope, it doesn't. Um, five pi over three is not a solution. Not a solution. So I guess the gist of this is you can physically plug in a number. Heck, I could do this three ways. I could solve it out and figure out what my answers are. I could physically take the thing and plug it in and do the math. I could graph it and see if it hits at the right spot. Those are ways to find out if it's a solution or not. All right, fun, fun. Last three problems of the semester. Here we go. Solve over zero to two pi and verify your answers are solutions. So we're gonna take two cosine three t minus one. We're gonna solve it from zero to two pi. And be very um, careful when you do these, um, when you do these on your test too, look at the bracket and that. So let me say, let me ask you this, let's say Let's say the solution said, said that, that was one of your answers. Are you gonna pick zero or are you gonna pick two pi if you got that for a dot where it should be? Zero, two pi. Include the zero, don't include the two pi. If that's a dot, your answer is zero in that. Okay, so let's go do this now. All right, first thing that's different about this problem, there's a little three in there. Haven't done that yet. I'm going to replace this whole thing. I'm gonna rewrite it. When you got a three or a two or a one half or whatever in that spot, you're gonna rewrite it as cosine of theta, not three T minus one equals zero. I want everybody to do this math and tell me where they think cosine is right now. Add one, divide by two, figure out where cosine is a half. Do it, please. And then I'll show you what to do after that. I'm going to replace 3t with theta. Where's cosine a half at? Yeah, we just did them, right? Just did it. It's here and here. Cosine's a half there and a half there. So cosine theta um, is a half at pi, uh, uh, pi over three, and it's a half at, what was this, five pi over three? We know that. Except there's a three T there, and we just solved for theta. What does theta equal? Theta equals three T. So I'm gonna set pi over three equal to three T. And I'm gonna solve it out for the t now. 
I'll multiply by the one third and my t value is pi over nine. That's one answer. This also equals three t. So I'm gonna set this theta value equal to three t. If there's a number attached, attached to that thing, this is the process you have to do. We're gonna do another one like here in just a second. I'm gonna multiply by a third, and my t value is five pi over nine. 5 pi over 9, and I got the answers that I'm looking for. Pi over 9 and 5 pi over 9. Why not add 2 pi in? Anybody? I'm not adding it to that. Yeah? Because the parentheses restrict how far it can go. Directions, directions said solve 0 to 2 pi. They didn't say solve forever. It restricted the answers down. I don't need to think about all the possible rotations because that's what it said. Good job. The parentheses said restrict your answer down. Okay? If it says solve the 0 to 2 pi, you don't have to add on the 2 pi in. All right, two more problems. Here we go. This one says different. This one says solve over 0 to 360. If it says that, it wants your answer in degrees rather than radians. So rather than answering like pi over 3 on this one, I'm going to answer it like 60 degrees or 45 degrees or something. So this one says... 3 tangent x over 2 plus 3, really what it is, is it's 3 tangent of 1 half x plus 3 equals 0. That's what I'm solving. But I'm not going to leave that 1 half x in there. I'm going to make it a theta. 3 tangent of theta plus 3 equals 0. And I'm going to solve that guy out. I'm going to move the 3. I'm going to divide by 3. I'm going to find the theta values where, where, that, where tangent is 1. I'm going to do all that stuff, okay? So that, look, 1 half x is the theta value. Solve for theta, set that theta equal to the 1 half x. So here we go, minus 3, 3 tan theta equals negative 3. Divide by 3, tan theta equals negative 1. All right, do you know where tangent values are negative 1? Tangent is y over x. Where does the y value divided by x value equal negative 1? Yes? 45 degrees. 45 degrees. Which one? All students take calculus. It's negative, so second and fourth quadrant. It's that one, and it's that one. You're right. It's the 45 degree values. Okay. So that 45 degree value right there is what, 135 degrees? And we said we were in degrees. And I think this one is 315, isn't it? 315 degrees and 135 degrees, I think those are right. Okay, but that's theta and now I need half of theta. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set 135 equal to one half of theta. Okay, I'll multiply by two. And I get my theta value is 135 divided by 2, or times 2, because I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. What's 135 times 2? 270. 270? Is that right? Is that right? 0, yeah, 270. 270 degrees. Okay, and now I'm going to set 315 equal to 1 half theta. And I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, by 2, and I get my theta value is equal to 315 times 2 is 660. Yes? 30, 30. Or 630 degrees. So, 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 yoink! Yoink! Yes, got it. Why? Oh, because my restrictions say I can only go up to 360. 
So within this restriction set, the only answer that will work is 270. Bam. Fun. Hard. A lot of culmination of a lot of things here. All right, last problem. Solve over to zero to two pi and verify your answers are solutions. Last problem here. And by the way, you could go on and you could graph these again and you could look at the intercepts and see if they hit. Cosine x plus sine x tangent x. Um, they're not all the same. I would probably like to try to get them the sines and cosines first. So I got cosine x plus sine x tangent is? Sine x all over cosine x equals two. Um, I'm, I got five minutes left, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of do this, this the uh, Reader's Digest, the, the abbreviated version of this. Um, I want common denominators. I'm gonna multiply this one by cosine x all over cosine x. I got cosine squared x plus sine squared x on top all over cosine x equals two. You know what I did? I got one all over cosine x equals two. Do you know what I did? Oh, look at that, one. Okay, I'm gonna use a reciprocal property. Yes, it's a secant, it is a secant, but I'm gonna do a deal where I just flip them both. So I got to cosine x is one half. I think this is the third time today we've done cosine x is equal to half. Isn't it? Is that right? So it's at 60 degrees here and at 60 degrees there. It did say solve, solve over zero to two pi. So um, that one right there, that value is pi over six. I don't need plus two pi in. And this one right here I think is, no, 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 pi, oh, let's try it again. Pi over three and five pi over three are my two answers. They are both fit within the restriction zero to two pi. And that's it. That's the end of semester one. Fun, fun, fun. If you need to go back and uh, uh, review these, I'm gonna post these on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is just um, Ken Coolis. if you ever wanted to go. There's actually a lot of math videos on that YouTube channel. Um, I think I have all of 72 subscribers or something like that, so I'm kind of big league. Um, and you guys can go watch those and, and, and see what you got. So Canvas Quiz 5.3, um, that's, that's due before the end of the semester. And then we have a, a, a final that will be the chapter test and, and this stuff will be on it. So we'll practice more of this next Monday and Tuesday. All right.